By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Tuesday, and that means we're back at the Raging Bull series. And believe it or not, but we've already reached the finals of this grand event, Old School Magic, the tournament held in Amsterdam right now online because of circumstances. And in the finals, we're going to see Ola, who is going to battle against Wouter. So, wow, we're up for something here because Ola is playing with his Nether Void deck and he, uh, Wouter is bringing his Atok deck to the table. And both of these decks have shown that they work well. I mean, they've reached the finals here for a reason. And uh, before we dive into the decks in the deck deck section, I would just like to point out that if you would like to go straight to the games, that is absolutely possible. How? Simple. Check the description below and there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. That will take you straight to the action. Talking about the description because there's actually quite a lot of information you can find there. If you want to know more about the specific rule set of this tournament, check the description below. If you would like to read the tournament report, Richard, the organizer, has um, made a beautiful tournament report on his website, The Raging Bull Series. All that information is in the description below. So the link to that article, the link to the website, and also more information. Maybe you wanna join The Raging Bull Series in the future. Again, all that information is down below. Okay, and now we're ready to start the action. And I'm first gonna start with the deck decks, and I'm gonna look at the deck of Ola, who's playing with Nether Void. Let's take a look at his brew. And here we see the deck of Ola. Now this deck uh, was already on the channel in the quarterfinals when it played against Mono Blue. So if you've missed that match, there's a link popping up right now. You can have a look. It was quite an entertaining match. Beautiful blue deck, I must say. Uh, but let's focus on this deck for now. So he's playing with Nether Void, right? One black and three to cast. And basically what it does is Nether Void says everything you want to cast from now on has an extra tax of three colorless mana. That's what Nether Void does. So Nether Void slows you down. It slows you both down. But of course, when you're the one playing with Nether Void, you're making sure that your deck is geared towards the Nether Void, right? You, you don't really mind the Void that much. And you can see that when we're looking at the cards here of Ola. Uh, he's playing with four Lanawar Elves, uh, for example, and with all the Moxen, Soul Ring, Black Lotus. So all that mana ramp is gonna help him, not only to play out the Nether Void early, but also to play out his creatures and pay that extra tax of three mana. On top of that, he's also playing with two Ice Storms to get rid of lands. And a card I really like, and a card that actually I've seen a lot in this tournament, but usually you don't see that often, Unsummoned for one blue. So because of the Nether Void, you know, your opponent will have to pay a hefty tax to play out the creature. So for example, to play out a Lunar Elves, all of a sudden the cast casting cost is now four. So imagine your opponent tapping out completely just to play a 1-1 one -one Mana Dork, and then in response, uh, what does Ola do? He simply casts an unsummon and says, you know what, it's going back to your hand and next turn you got to tap all out again just to cast a 1-1. And uh, I love that, you know, I really like seeing a card like uh, like unsummon in this deck. I think that, and I wonder maybe Ola, if you're watching this final, you can answer, how did you make the decision to go for unsummon instead of boomerang? I think boomerang is always a card it's in your sideboard, I see, and I guess against specific decks, like non-creature decks, you're gonna take out your Unsummon and board in your Boomerang. Um, yeah, I find Boomerang great because you can just Unsummon basically any permanent, right? But I do understand the catch here because Boomerang is two, Unsummon is only one blue, right? So it's, it's way more efficient, but I wonder if you tested that out and how you came to the conclusion to go for an Unsummon over a Boomerang. Now, if we look at the rest of the cards, we kind of see all those usual power cards, right? Uh, we see the blue power in the form of uh, the, the Ancestral Recall, the Time Walk, the Time Twister, and then we only see one counter spell, which is another thing that I find interesting. For example, when you're playing with Nether Void and your opponent has to tap out completely, I would be tempted to start playing uh, with Power Sinks myself. Then again, you have to make choices in the deck, right? I mean, if you're gonna play Power Sings, what are you gonna take out? Are you gonna take out creatures, for example? You also want creatures to put pressure on the game, right? Because with Nether Void, the longer the game takes, um, the, the the less impactful Nether Void is, right? Because the more uh, mana your opponent is likely to have, and the more mana they have, the less the tax of three really matter. So that Nether Void is the strongest in the start of the game. So I guess what Ola wants to do with his design is make sure that he can get Nether Void out early, and that he can start playing out smaller creatures and still deal a good amount of damage. I think 
Mishra's factory is something to to um, take into account when you're playing with Nether Void simply because it doesn't have a casting cost and it's a body, right? So it's a creature. And I think Ice Storms can help for that. I think even Unsummons can help for that because if you've already had your land drop and then you're animating your, your factory and your opponent bounces that with the Unsummon, you can't play it out directly again because you already had your land drop. So that's that could create some interesting um, scenarios here. So really cool deck i think tempo is going to be key in this match when i'm looking at this nether void deck and also when we're going to look at Valter's deck so i'm going to explain that tempo story a little bit later when we look at, at Valter's deck as well but this is definitely a strong deck and remember this deck has full power the deck of Valter does not doesn't mean that it's that that the deck of Valter cannot win or that Ola's deck is favored i don't think Ola's deck is favored to be honest even though all is playing with the power i think it's 50 50. That's just my opinion though. So let's take a look at the deck of Wouter and, um, and discuss his Atok Brew. And here we see the deck of Wouter. So as I mentioned uh, in the other deck deck, Wouter's deck is underpowered. Doesn't mean it doesn't have any power. Look at this pile. It is aggression, you know. This, this deck can deal a lot of damage. I do see a couple of cards in here that I think, are they really gonna be useful? And I see a couple of cards in here that I think they're gonna be extremely useful. So first off, He's playing a Nether Void deck, right? So all his cheap casting cost cards are basically better for two reasons. One, he can cast them before the Nether Void hits the table. And two, when the Nether Void is on the table, he's most likely to still be able to cast them because they're cheap to begin with. So the extra cost of three, super annoying, but he's still going to be able to probably play through. So an Atok is still playable. The Chains, the Bolts, very playable. Uh, the Soul Ring. The Felwer Stones, the Mana Vaults, the Ank of Mishras, all that is still pretty doable. Although the Ank of Mishra could shoot himself in the foot, you know, because after Nether Void comes in with an Ank, Ank on the table, it's only going to be more difficult for Wouter to still play spells because he wants to play out his land so he can play out his bigger creatures like the Suchi, like the Triskelion. But that's not really a smart thing to do, right? Because you're hurting yourself. And I don't think it's going to hurt. Um, Ola that much, the Ankh of Mishra, because Ola is playing with and the Mana Dorks and the Moxen, you know, so he's got a lot of, of artifact stones and artifact generated mana. So I wonder if after sideboarding the Ankh of Mishra might, you know, leave leave the table. A card that could be helpful here is City in a Bottle just because of those Surrender Pafrits that he's playing. And also I think that, um, like I said, the four Atox, they're still very playable. There are a lot of cards in this deck that Wouter will be able to play out before the um the nether void hits the table and i think that's going to be crucial if he manages to do that if he manages to put on a lot of pressure early uh you know playing out his threats um then he can win it because he's going too fast for the nether void to really make an impact another option that he has is um the nether void's on the table and he's got enough burn to kind of take care of all the threats of um of ola stabilize and then take the game I think, but I've said this before, I think that the Black Vice is not going to play a big role. And the reason I'm saying I've said this before, this before, because I think there was another final of the Reggie Bull series where I also saw Black Vices and there were two aggro decks going head to head. And I said, well, I don't think the Vice is going to matter. And the Vice really, really mattered. So, you know, the Vice can definitely still be impactful also because it can still be like a mini giant growth for the Atok, right? That, that's a nice thing when you play Atok. If, if you play an artifact that's not that impactful, you can simply sack it to the Atok and the artifact still has an impact on the game. It still has a value. Um, another card that I'd like to point out here, and Wouter's only playing a one-off. Unfortunately, we cannot see a sideboard on this picture. So maybe in a sideboard, he's got more of those, is the Blood Moon. I think Blood Moon can really have an impact. You know, um, the, His opponent, Ole, is playing with a lot of non-basics right so it can really really have an impact if he manages to play the blood moon and um you know for example ola cannot find the black lotus or the right moxen it can be super annoying for ola that being said he does have the moxen he does have the black lotus so it's not the a blood moon is not the end of the world but it could slow him down and if you can slow your opponent down and you're yourself or playing with an aggressive deck like this slowing down could be enough again that's a tempo factor right slowing down could be enough for Wouter to get uh, the win here and we saw in his match in the semifinals, if you've missed that, by the way, it's really worth uh, watching that one, when he played against a Robots deck, which is an extremely strong deck, that he won it because of that tempo. He was able to deal a lot of damage early on, and then later in the game, 
he's just going to draw into his burn, and if the opponent cannot counter the burn or doesn't have any life gain, you're there already. So that's a nice thing with these decks. If, if you're able to deal some damage early stages, you can just finish it off with burn later. You can just wait for you just to draw into, into your bolts and your chains. So that's always something that these red decks kind of have. And of course, that ATOC, which is super annoying, because as soon as your opponent gets low enough, you attack with the ATOC. And when you're the opponent, you don't have the luxury to say, you know what, I'm going to take the damage from the ATOC. Oh, no, wait a moment. Uh, wait a minute. He's got like two or three or four artifacts on the board. He can sack them all to the ATOC. I'm on eight life. I'm dead. I got to block the ATOC. I don't want to block the ATOC because it's going to sack two of his artifacts that he doesn't really need. And he's going to kill my top creature. But you're kind of forced to. So this is really a deck that puts you under pressure. And before you know it, you're kind of stuck, you know, in, in, in a really bad place. So we, we saw, I mean, I saw Valter do that in the semifinals. And, and it can definitely happen again. So a lot is going to matter on, on, on the tempo, I believe, in this final. And, of course, on the way that they sideboard. Okay, this is the deck of Wouter. Now let's go to the finals. Let's go to the match between Ola and Wouter. Game number one of the finals of the Raging Bull Series 2021. Who is going to win this one? Ola at the top, Wouter at the bottom. And as you can see, I haven't fast forwarded this match times two. Why? Because you see lovely Ola's face here. And if I would fast forward it, you would see him headbang all the way and uh, on top of that it's the finals you know so maybe it's nice to kind of take our time to really look at these plays there we see Ola start with a mistress factory he's on the play here starting with wow mox jet mox pearl here he goes and a soul ring wow playing out four cards in turn one and he still has three in hand then yep and passing turn i think both players kept their hands so no mulligans so that's always a good start for finals about are just starting with one mountain and there is a black vice, which is going to be completely useless. You can kind of see the thumbs up from Wouter. And I think if you're Wouter and you've been playing the whole day, you're pretty confident, right? At first, when you see an opener like this, you get kind of worried. But Wouter's in the finals, so he's played power decks the whole day. There we see a swing of two, by the way, by Ola. So I think Wouter's like, okay, I've seen this trick before. He's very low in cards now, and he's got a lot of mana. Well, whatever. There we see an Argovian Pixies, a 2-1. And that means that Ola now can swing for four next turn, and it's only the second turn here. So a lot of pressure early on. Let's see if Wouter can do anything against it. I mean, a chain maybe on the Pixies would be nice, or if he has a bold in hand, play that on the factory next combat. Looks like he's going through the card, so he must have some options here. We see Ola waiting, tapping two for a Felwer Stone. That Felwer Stone cannot make red. And that means that he's kind of signaling to Ola here, you know what, you can just swing in again, and that's four more damage. But I mean, Wouter also wants to ramp up, of course. There we see the Mox activation attacking for four here. Wouter's going to drop to 14. And this is just so much early pressure. Another Argovian Pixies, more pressure even. This is looking bad for Wouter. He really has to start clearing the board. If he can find another mana and at least cast a Suchi. But of course the Argovian Pixies don't really mind the Suchi that much. And there is an Atok. Okay, at least that's something. He can sack the Vice to the Atok when he's blocking. Maybe, I mean, he's keeping a red open. Who knows? Maybe he's got another Bolt. So there is a possible scenario here that Ola wants to keep pressure on. He's going to attack with everything. And Wouter's just going to block one with the Atok and uh, maybe bolt another threat and only take two. That's definitely realistic. There we see the... Ola's thinking, see the activation, I think, or not? He is worried about that one red open. He knows he's playing against red, right? You know there's going to be a bolt or there's at least a big chance of a bolt. We haven't seen a single bolt yet. And I think that's why Ola... Yeah, is he going to or not? He wants to keep pressure on as well. I really get this conundrum that he's in. And he's animating, attacking. So let's see what uh, Wouter's going to do. I'm expecting a bolt here, to be honest. You can kind of see that hand already going to the mountain. First, he's going to block. He's going to eat the vice. I wonder what he's going to kill. And he's going to kill. And there is the bolt as well. So I'm assuming the bolt on the factory. And he's going to kill an Argovian pixie. So this is actually a really good turn for Wouter. It couldn't have gone any better. He's only taking two damage, and he's taken out two creatures on the side of Ola. Ooh, but there we see a mighty flyer, a 3-4. And that four toughness 
is so important, right? Because that means that Wouter cannot chain or bolt it. Man, Serendip Afrit is such a good creature. Three mana for a three, four flyer. It's just ridiculous stats. And we see Wouter playing out another Mishra's Factory. Tapping three here. What can he do? Okay, playing Chaos Orb. I think he's going to flip, right? He tapped three, so he's going to activate it straight away. The nice thing is Ola doesn't have green open for, for example, a Crumble. So this is a very good decision for Wouter to go for it straight away. And there's, yep, it's a hit. It's a good flip. No discussions needed here on the Surrender. This is very important here for Wouter. And attacking here. So he's drawing into, this is interesting, by the way, that he's attacking. He's going, he's going to be the aggressor here. And that means that Ola takes one point of damage. I think I would have kept it untapped, to be honest. On the other hand, you know, Wouter knows his deck. He's in the finals, and his deck is very aggressive. So he's probably thinking each point can matter in the long run. Ooh, another Surrender Pafrit. This is bad news for Wouter. He was lucky with the Chaos Orb, but, I mean, if he has a land and a burn spell, like a Disintegrate, so just a land Disintegrate, he can take care of it again. There is a Suchi. Okay, that's not too bad. He could, in theory now, by the way, attack. It's interesting. I would have probably attacked and kind of say, okay, Ola, do you want to block? And then, you know, you would have to sack your stone and your Suchi to kill the Surrendip. And maybe it, it would be worth it because the Surrendip of Freed is really a tough creature for Wouter uh, to deal with. He's going to take three now, going to go down to seven, and all of a sudden he's pretty much in danger zone. There we see another Argovian Pixies. Those Argovian Pixies are great. They can block Suchis every day of the week. So it's really hard for Wouter now. He's and taking damage and he's not able to put any pressure back on Ola on the swing back. Wouter here looking at his hand. What can he do here? Maybe if he can find a city in a bottle. Tapping two. Is that going to be the city? It's going to be another Atok. I would definitely swing in with one Atok. Why not? Okay, deciding not to. Interesting. I wonder what he has in hand. Maybe he's hoping for an extra land to play out his burn spell, right? Because if he has five lands, he can play a Disintegrate for four on the Surrendip, so he doesn't want to attack and sack his Felwer. That could definitely be the case. Attacking here for three, so Wouter's going to go down to four. Oh, this is bad news here. The only good thing here for Wouter is that the Surrendip is a three four, so that means that he's probably got two more turns. Two more turns to find a solution. So after this, he's got one more turn. Is Ola going to take the first game of the finals of the Raging Bull series? That is the question here. And he's passing turn again. I really think he's got one of those burn spells or else he would have attacked at least with one Atok. He doesn't want to sack that Thower Stone, kind of indicating he's got to disintegrate. And Ola, of course, feeling feeling confident, attacking here. It's going to put him on one. One measly life. Oh, man. And that's it. Okay, Ola got this one. Oh, man, I would have loved to see your hand, Wouter, if there was really an X spell in there. But, uh, okay, first game here for Ola. And Ola's deck is looking strong. I mean, that power is going to give you pace. We didn't even see the Nether Void, but the creatures alone were enough. The early start, the tempo gain, and the pressure with the Flyers. The Surrender Perfeet is looking really, really strong. I don't know if Wouter has another city in a bottle in his sideboard. If he does, I would board it in, Wouter. Anyway, both players are going to look at their sideboards, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two of the finals of the Raging Bull series. Wouter on the player, and what an opening he has. A library of Alexandria, so that's a great start for Wouter. Passing turn to Ola. Ola, of course, playing with Ice Storms, two main. So he does have something against it. And his Strip Mine, so three answers. And I guess the Chaos Orb, so four answers to the Loa. Which, uh, which I think is pretty good. Usually when I build a deck, I make sure I've got four answers to lands. There we see a Lunar Elves. And a Mox Ruby. So again, a quick start by Ola. Passing turn. So next turn, if he can find a Blue Source, he can cast a Surrender Perfeet. There we see Bowter drawing in extra cards. And I talked about Wouter possibly boarding in more CD in the bottles. I wonder if he did. 
And he's now thinking, but I've got the Loa, I don't want to play it. But maybe he didn't. Uh, maybe it's nice, Ola and Wouter, if you're watching this, if you can let us know how you boarded after that first game. If you want to, of course. And there we see Ola playing his Mishra's Factory. I guess if you're Ola, you want to put just pressure on the board, making it harder for Wouter to sit back and draw cards. Okay, Chaos Orb, that's one of the answers we talked about. I'm, I'm just expecting a flip here on the Library of Alexandria. Attacking here first with the Lunawer Elves. Or not. Okay, he's going to pay for it. He's going to flip. Okay, there we go. He's going to stand. He's actually blocking his own flip, but it doesn't matter, Ola, man. It's a, it's a hit. Well done. And I know that there, there are a lot of discussions and people who say, yeah, but Swedish only plays with one strip, so Library of Alexandria is too powerful. I, I still disagree. I think if you make sure that your deck is four answers, two lands, like I said, and that includes a Chaos Orb and a Strip Mine and two other options, you're pretty much fine. And when you play in a four strip format, it means that everybody, almost everybody is going to play with four strips, right? So you're taking four slots out of a deck. But anyway, that's just, this is my humble opinion. Uh, Atok played by Wouter, who's passing turn now. We see Ola casting an Underground C. And tapping the C. Oh, Blue Elemental Blast coming from the sideboard. That must feel so good when you're Ola. And, you know, you know my one of my favorite decks, of course, is Timmy Spellbook, where I play Mono Blue. So I know how difficult it is when you play Mono Colored and you can have the Blue Blast or Red Blast against you because Wouter, he's kind of forced to maybe add Red Elemental Blast in his deck, but it's not going to be as efficient as Oliver. Ola, whenever he draws a blue elemental blast, it's like a million dollar card, right? He can almost hit everything in Wouter's deck, counter even, and that doesn't count for Wouter when he draws into a red elemental blast. He'll have to wait for the right moment to use it. So definitely um, one of the downsides of playing monocolored. And again, it's looking pretty good for Ola after taking care of that library, playing his own library. I think he's pretty low on cards, so it's not going to have that much of an impact. But that's the good thing about Loa. It's still a land as well. And there he's going to swing in with the 2-2. This is difficult for Wouter. Doesn't have any artifacts. Probably just going to take the damage here. Going to go to 14. Yeah, this is annoying. You know, when you have an Atok, you want to just have pressure on the board, right? Oh, he's going to block. and Oh, interesting. This is an interesting uh, scenario. I didn't see this coming. He's going to animate his Mishra's Factory. Second to the Atok, and he's going to try to eat. Oh, an unsummon! Wow, that's a good move here for Ola. Things are really looking up for Ola here after this unsummon play. This is fantastic from Ola, and this is probably why I like the card unsummon so much. And I had a little question in the deck deck where I said, Ola, how did you make the decision to go for, for unsummon over Boomerang? Well, this shows it. It's so easy to play an Unsummon. You only need one blue, a Boomerang. He wouldn't have been able to play here. And there we see an Atok being played by Wouter. And I mean, things are not looking great. That's the Atok that, of course, got bounced back to his hand. He just lost to Mishra's Factory pretty much for nothing. Let's see what Ola can do here. Tapping three. Are we going to see a Surrendip? That would mean even more trouble for Wouter. Yeah, surrender for free. Oh, man. This is going, this could be a very short final here because things are again looking up for Ola. Wouter in doubt. Oh, there we see the red elemental blast. Okay, that is nice, Wouter. I'm actually happy you're able to cast this because I feel Ola would get ahead too much if it would have uh, stayed on the board. And maybe you're wondering why doesn't Wouter wait, wait for, uh, for Ola to take a damage from his own Surrender. I think it's a good decision not to because Wouter maybe he has another Blue Elemental Blast in hand or maybe he's going to draw into one and it's only one damage. Or maybe he has an Unsummon. You know, there are a few scenarios. So I think it's a good decision once Ola stepped out to kind of counter it. There we see a Vice again. Interesting that he hasn't boarded out the Vices. Uh, I kind of expected Wouter to do that, so that's an interesting choice. Of course, a vice is a great food for the Atox, so I do get it from that perspective. Tapping three again. Is there going to be another Surrendip? Oh, interesting. A time twister. Loving it. 
I love this, man. And this is also risky from Ola. Of course, he wants to get his Library of Alexandria back online. Wouter has to decide now. There's a lightning bolt. And they're going to... They're going to shuffle up. Oh, I love this. And it's it's understandable from Ola because he's going to get his Library of Alexandria back online. He can start, you know, drawing extra cards. But it's also a risk because you're playing against a player, um, you know, whose deck is pure gas. So you're giving him more fuel here. And he's going to put more pressure on. But it's, it's an understandable play. Also because Ola, I think, hardly had any cards in hand when he played it. So that's another advantage for him. So both players shuffling up, and this is really turning into to a real, real final. After that first game, I was a little worried, and also after the start of this game. But I'm starting to see potential here. Game number two, both players going to draw a full, fresh, new hand. And I have to say, uh, it's Ola is still in the driver's seat, in my opinion, because of the Library of Alexandria. But I'm not going to underestimate uh, Wouter here. So he's going to draw a fresh 7. I wonder if there's an answer to the Library of Alexandria in that 7. There we see a blue elemental blast in Ola's hand, by the way. And he's probably going to pass. Oh, he's going to draw first. Maybe he's got a mox that he wants to play out. Going to go through his hand here. 8 in hand at the moment. What is he going to do? Playing out a land for turn. Mishra's Factory and a Mox Pearl. So he's got six in. Oh, he's actually going off. Oh, mind twist. I was like surprised. Why is he going off the Loa plan? But this makes sense. This is a better alternative. Yuck. A mind twist. And here you can see like why mind twist is even better when you've got power. Because power means free mana. And that means extra... Uh, ability to discard more cards so taking these three away let's see and I mean we can't see it Wouter we can't see it is that two bolts uh, that's a bolt a red elemental blast Ooh, that's gonna hurt the good thing about it is though all is tapped out so now Wouter kind of has an opening that vice it's annoying, but it doesn't really matter that much. Although, finally, Ola's got more cards in hand and he's going to take a damage from a vice. He's got five in hand. Let's first look at what what, uh, what Wouter is going to do here, playing a mountain. Let's see. Tapping two red here. Is there another A talk? Oh, city in a bottle! Not that yet. Well, not that efficient anymore because the low is no longer active. Although, you know, it's still... Ola was pretty close to an active low with five in hand. But I think the city is going to be really important to kind of block those surrender Pafrits. I feel, I, I still wonder though, if you're Wouter, let me know in the comments below what you would have done. If you would have kept the city in the bottle in hand, I understand it's risky. But kind of wait for Ola, because maybe he said, you know, I'm not going to, going to play anything next turn because he wants to... Get an active Loa and then you just wait for him or wait for him to play out a surrender so you get more value out of the city. I know it's a little, I mean, it's a little stingy, right? I get it. It could go absolutely wrong, but I think that's what I would have done. But then again, I'm not in the final, so that's probably for a reason. There we see Ola here going through his hand now. Six in hand after drawing that card. Now five in hand playing Tropical Island. Tapping a Bayou. And there we see an Argovian Pixies. And is he animating one of his factories? Or not? Mox Ruby, Lana were tapped. Smile there from Ola. What's his plan? Okay, another Argovian Pixies. Bouter's probably really happy with that Atok right now. Because that can eat some pixies. I wonder next turn if Wouter is going to attack with the Atok. Probably not though. Because he also has those uh, Mishra's factories there. So passing turn here. Wouter taking his turn. Let's see. Tapping one red. Chain lightning. 
on one of the pixies or on the face? That's the question. We see Ola thinking, am I going to play my Blue Blast? And he's playing a Blue Blast. That's actually not too bad when you're, when you're Wouter because you're like, okay. You know, Blue Blast for Chain, that's not too bad in my deck. And it looks like Wouter has passed turn. Okay, so not too much happening. Let's see what Ola can do, what he's going to do. I mean, he's got a lot of potential bodies, right? So maybe he wants to swing in. He could consider swinging in with the two Pixies and a Factory because he can pump the Factory to a 3-3 and then kind of forcing Wouter to, uh, to sack, for example, the Vice, although the Vice is not that valuable. Still, you're taking away an artifact, you know, and, and ATOC and artifacts, that can get really annoying really quickly. Yeah, so he's going to animate. Wow, he's going to be even more aggressive. This is interesting. Does that mean that Ola has an unsummon in hand? Okay, there we see first a Shatter taking care of one of the factories. So there's a 2 2 factory still. And there's another Shatter taking care of the second factory. This is really nice from Wouter, killing both of the factories here. Probably going to block one of the Pixies, eat the Vice, killing one of the Pixies. And I wonder if we're going to see an Unsummon here. Okay, we're not going to see an Unsummon, so that means only two damage for Wouter and three creatures gone on the side of Ola. This has been a good combat step for Wouter. He's really getting back into this. Remember, after the Time Twister, Ola had an active Loa and played that Mind Twist. And look where, where Wouter is now. He's, he's completely back in it. And that is commendable, sir. Definitely commendable. Tapping two red. Casting Chaos Orb. Interesting. I think if I were Wouter, maybe I would also swing with the factory here. Then again, I don't know uh, the cards that Wouter has in hand, of course. And maybe he wants to keep the mana open. Maybe he wants to keep a blocker open. Of course, the Mishra's Factory is not a good blocker against the Argovian Pixies. So that's probably why I would have considered just uh, attacking here with the uh, Factory as well. The fact that he doesn't do it, for me, kind of indicates that he wants to keep more mana open than just one red. So I wonder what he has in hand there. Maybe a red Elemental Blast. Well done, and... Yeah, maybe, and then he wanted to keep two mana open to and be able to flip and play a red Elemental Blast, if need be. There's a Bayou. Attacking here with the 2-1. Let's see, Ola, two cards in hand, by the, way, by the way. Wouter, only one card in hand. Man, this is a good final. I'm really enjoying this. Game number two. Tapping a red. Okay, he's going to flip. In response, crumble. Yeah, in response, crumble. Okay. That makes sense because we haven't seen a single crumble thus far in this match. Does mean two life for Wouter, which is not too bad. And those two life are going to be taken away by the Pixie. So he's going to stay on 14. Now he's going to untap. Playing a mountain. Tapping three. What are we going to see here? Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And all the notes. Oh, man. This is not, not good. Oh, I love it, man. Absolutely love it. It's not the worst for Ola, though. You know, because he gets to, to draw seven fresh ones. And I think he played out how many blue elemental blasts? Two? Probably has two more. Okay, there we see a vice from Wouter. And now, of course, that good old Vice Wheel of Fortune combo. One of the oldest tricks of the book, the magic book. There's a Felwer Stone, and I'm expecting him to swing in here with the Atok. No, he's not. He's just passing turn. There we see a Crumble End Step. And uh, crumble on the city of Brass. So that means he's got some Surrender Afrits in hand, probably. Wouter's going to go up to 16. It's so interesting. If I would have been Wouter, I definitely would have attacked with the Atok. I'm pretty sure I'm missing something. And 
and they're playing the soul ring. So Ola took some damage from the vice, but because of the crumble only took two instead of three, so he's on 12. There we see a surrender, right? Yeah, surrender Pafrit. That makes perfect sense after taking care of that city in a bottle. Let's see what else he can do here. Oh man, what a game. Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune. Loving it. Bayou. Tapping some more. Are we going to see more creatures even? Another Serendip? Another Serendip of Freed. Oh man. Is that Wheel of Fortune going to mean the end for Ola here? There is a Nether Void. The Nether Void is actually annoying because remember, Wouter's playing with Triskelions now, but he cannot cast them anymore because of that Nether Void. And this is the first Nether Void we've seen the entire match. And now Ola is kind of doing what he wants to do. It is a little bit late in the game though, but I think the Nether Void is still relevant because Wouter's playing with Triskelions. He can't play out a Suchi because he's got seven mana, right? So he has enough to play out a Suchi. Oh, Mishra's Workshop, okay. <laughs> that kind of cancels out that Nether Void. Oh, that is so funny. And look at him go now. So he's going to cast a Suchi, I believe. Exactly. That Mishra's Workshop came at exactly the right time. I think I would swing in now again with the Atok. But I guess I'm just a really aggressive Atok player here. Because you've got Felwerstone and Vice to sack to it, right? And then you turn it into a 5-6. Um, a and it can gobble up one of the Surrendips. Because he's looking at 6 damage next turn. He's going to drop to 10. Let's see what uh, what Bauter is going to do here. Exactly. Attacking with the Atok. Okay, okay, okay. I think this is a good choice. And this is why the Atok is such an annoying creature. You can see all the thing. Oh man, what to do? And I've played with Atok. I've played against Atok. It is super annoying. I mean... On, on actually on both sides also when you're playing with Atok it can be quite difficult to decide when to sack what and I'm not really good at it uh, and we see Ola now thinking as well okay if I block Flowerstone Vice is going to go I again this is me giving my opinion and feel free to disagree and I could be absolutely wrong but I would probably uh, would I block it the thing is, if you if you decide to block, for example, with a Surrendip, you're kind of saying to Wouter, you know, I'm willing to trade my Surrendip for two of your artifacts, which is not too bad because those artifacts are going to be valuable as long as the Atok is in play. And I think that's what he does now. He's saying, I'm going to block it with one Surrendip of Freed. Then in, in response, I'm expecting him to, to, to sack some artifacts here or maybe sack one Felwer Stone and cast uh, a Bolt for example, or, or a chain in his second main. It's interesting. The fact that Wouter has to think this long shows that he's got some options. And it shows that it's not as easy as I thought it would be. And Wouter has been playing this deck the whole day long, right? He's reached the finals with this deck, so he knows exactly when to sack what or how to use the Atok power. So he's sacking Vice, Felwerstone, killing the Surrendip. Okay, so that's kind of the scenario that I expected. And it's also nice here for Wouter, by the way, that Ola is completely tapped out. It's not like he can kind of play an Unsummon out of nowhere and change the situation. Because Unsummon and Atok is actually, you know, for an Atok player, Unsummon is a horrible card to have to deal with. Maybe I should start playing Unsummon in my deck. Wow, I just really like that card. Anyway, Ola looking at his board. He's going to untap, take a damage from his own uh, Surrender, but already did, and he's going to attack. Interesting that he's attacking with the Argovian Pixies as well, because then he's kind of opening up to the Suchi. Oh, that makes sense. He's got the Maze of If. Now I understand. Maze of If in hand, playing it out. So he can use that to block one of the attackers, probably the Suchi. And he's going to pass turn here. And both players are on 11. Ola is one game up. If he wins this one, he is the Raging Bull champion of 2021. 
I think he probably feels confident. I don't know how many cards Wouter has in hand. We do see Ola with two cards in hand there, so he's getting pretty low. Wonder how many cards Wouter has. Cannot have that many anymore. Playing another Suchi, more pressure on the board. And I mean, he's going to swing in, right? Yeah, he's going to swing in with everything, it seems. He knows that one of his creatures is going to get untapped anyway. Gonna Oh, strip mine! <laughs> he's going to strip the mace! Strip the mace! Oh, this is bad news. Ola looking at his hand thinking, do I have any options? Oh, the mace is gone. And that uh, that Suchi has summoning sickness, so he cannot attack with that one Suchi. So it's not that bad. I hope that uh, that they realize this. So that one Suchi stays at bay, but he can, of course, still attack with the Atok, the other Suchi, and the Mishra's Factory still inflicting some damage. If you're Ola, you're now thinking what to do. Probably chum block with your Lanora Elves, right? And uh, chum block the Suchi. And then, of course, Wouter is going to sack the Suchi in response to his Atok, but still. Well, is he going really? Maybe he wants to trade for Lanora. Well, then that's that's Wouter's business. But I think that's what I would do. Ola a little bit in the tank here. It does worry me a little bit that they haven't noticed that one Suchi. Because it has summoning sickness. It cannot attack. Or am I missing something? There we see a tap by Wouter. Or sorry, by Ola. So he is planning on doing something. Seems like he's tapping for that Soul Ring, the Mox and Tropical Island. What is he going to do? And has he indicated a block on the Atok with the Lana Elves? A crumble here. Okay, so crumble on one of the Suchis, and then it makes sense because Wouter can choose to sack the Suchi. Probably is not going to because Ola already declared that he's going to block that one. Exactly. Now, thank you for correcting this. I was a little worried because that could have a huge impact on the game. Anyway, the crumble goes on the Mishra's factory. Interesting. I'm liking this. Ola probably thinking, I don't want to give Wouter any life. This is an interesting scenario. If if it plays out the way it looks like it's going to, then we see the Mishra's Factory going. He's going to feed it to the Atog. Yeah, makes sense, because it's going to be dead anyway and no life gain from the uh, Crumble. So that means that the Lanora Elves is a goner if it was blocking the Atog and then 4 damage from the Suchi. So he would drop to 11 here. Let's see if the... Or sorry, to 7. From 11 to 7. Let's see if that's a scenario. Yeah, that's, that's what's happening. And uh, Wouter is tapped out. He's probably going to pass turn. And then Ola's going to take a damage from his own surrender. Going to go down to six. Wow, and what an exciting final. What an exciting second game. And both players are still very much in it. There have been several moments in this game. And I don't know if you agree with me, but where I felt Ola can now take the next step and is most likely to win this, but every time Wouter seems to get back from that situation. An attack here with the Surrendip, Wouter's going to drop to 8 here. He's going to untap. That double Suchi is looking very risky. Of course, Ola can just block one for free because of the Pixies. But then he still will get some damage through. And of course, that Atok is the problem. You could have a scenario here where Wouter attacks, Ola blocks the Suchi. In response, Wouter sacks the Suchi to the Atok, and he's able to deal seven damage. And guess what? Ola is on six. There is. Okay, Felwer Stone. <laughs> Interesting. He's tapping a lot of mana for the Felwer Stone. I think one mana too, too many. Oh, of course not, because for the workshop, you can only use it to cast. Okay, no, makes sense. Forget what I said. So, attacking here with his full force. Ola needs something like an unsummon here. It's going to block a Suchi. And Wouter now has that Felwer Stone to feed to the Atok, so it doesn't have to sack the Suchi to do that. There are a few scenarios for Ola, but he's only got one card in hand, though. 
needs to take care of one of the creatures. He's got to block an extra one. What can he do here? He is going to do something, it seems. Exciting times. Tapping four. Is there a crumble? Unsummon. Okay, so he's going to cast the unsummon. He does have the unsummon. I guess he's got to unsummon the Atok, right? It seems like uh, Valter said, I'm going to feed the Felwer Stone to the Atok. And then Ola played the unsummon. So that means that Ola is going to go down to two. But things, things are now looking really, really bad for Ola, right? He's going to drop to one because of his own Surrendip. And, uh, I mean, he, he needs something. One measly life. And he can deal five damage to Ola. If he's got a time walk, he can win this one. No, he can't, because then he takes an extra turn and kills himself. <laughs> anyway, attacking for five first. Wouter's on three. Man, this is such a close game. But I think there's not really a way out for Ola, but I could be missing something. Oh, yeah, there's the time walk. Oh, this is hysterical. Wow, what a great game number two. Oh, man, this is old school magic at its finest. So, Wouter winning this because Ola kills himself with his own surrender per free. And he was so close. One life point away from victory, Ola. One life point away and also from winning the Raging Bull series. But not yet. You have to be patient. You're going to get another shot because we're going to go to game number three. What a fantastic game. Game number three. This is the decider. Oh, man. That game two. Insane. Ola on the play. Does that make him a slight favorite? I don't know. I don't know. Crazy, crazy game. It looks like he's trying to decide whether or not he wants to keep his hand. Okay, there's your answer. By you and a pass turn. So a very relaxed opener by Ola. Wouter starting with a soul ring, having some ramp and passing turn here. Do we see a crumble? Okay, crumble on the soul ring. Makes sense, or else uh, Wouter could potentially play out a Suchi in turn two. That would have been nice for Wouter. Let's see what Ola can do here. Casting Strip Mine, tapping both of those, casting Chaos Orb. Okay, I wonder is if Wouter has a Shatter, he can Shatter next turn. And uh, taking on his turn, untapping, drawing for turn, playing a second mountain, and pass turn here. So no shatter, or maybe the choice made not to play out the shatter. And now Ola can, okay, he's not doing it, because an option would have been to flip on the mountain and use the strip mine on the other mountain, kind of taking care of the lands of Wouter, but he's deciding not to. So I guess he's decided to use his strip later in the game, perhaps for one of the Mishra's factories, or Eloa, or whatever, you know, you want to not always just use your strip. Especially when you play against a monocolor deck, you know, the mountain isn't very valuable. You could do it, however, because of, uh, of a tempo play. But it all depends on your hand, of course. And there we see a Suchi from Wouter in a past turn. So, I wonder if Ola's going to flip now. Yeah, he's going to flip on the Suchi, it seems. There we go. So he's probably going to stand up again. Yes! Yep, decent flip. Ola, you're a good flipper, man. I haven't seen you miss a flip the entire tournament. Tacking for two here. That means Wouter's going to drop to 19. Of course, he got a life from the crumble earlier, the crumble on his soul ring. I think if you're Wouter, it's, it's not too bad. You know, you're exchanging a Chaos Orb for a Suchi. It's not the end of the world. And he's passing turn here. Playing out a factory and a Felwer Stone. Can Ola find any of his 3-4 flyers? Because they seem to be a big problem for, for Wouter to deal with. I wonder. Tapping 2. Okay. 
tapping one, tapping two again. <laughs> Let's see what he's going to do. Time walk. That is pretty decent. And taking his extra turn. So he's going to have a nice extra land drop. Tapping four, casting the Netter Void. The Netter Void is going to be annoying for Wouter. It means he can no longer cast like cards of, like a Suchi, you know, cards that have a casting cost of four, unless he can play another land next turn. And also it makes the Strip Mine a bit stronger. So now Ola next turn could consider using the Strip because it's going to set Wouter back another extra mana, another extra turn before he can really play out his heavy hitters. He does have enough mana to play a 2 CMC and a 3 CMC spell. Ola didn't play out a land yet, by the way, so that's interesting. Maybe he cannot find it. Remember, Nether Void also works for him. So in response to the Nether Void, we see a bolt. So that means Ola dropping to 17, Wouter taking on his turn here. Playing a mountain. So now he's got enough mana again to cast four CMC spells. And animating, going in for two. I mean, that's not too bad. You know, Wouter's been able to just deal five damage pretty much out of nowhere. It's not too bad. So Ola now on 15, taking his turn. Playing land for turn and then passing. I think Ola needs more land because of his own nether void. And now Wouter cannot attack with the factory again because Ola has his own factory and also the strip untapped. Although I wonder if Ola's going to want to use the strip because it seems to be that he's pretty light on lands and he cannot really play out what he has in hand or maybe what he has in hand is simply not useful right now. That could be another option. So both of these players are kind of uh, sitting in the waiting room, waiting for the right cards. Wouter a little bit in the tank here, looking at his hand still. Looks like he's passing turn because we see Ola picking up his hand. Yeah, passing turn. He's drawing a card, playing a Bayou, and just pass turn. There's another mountain. This is an interesting moment in the match because it looks like both players are just top decking even though they got a pretty full hand. There we see a strip mine on a factory. Interesting timing. I wonder if this indicates something. If Ola is now going to play stuff out, there must be a reason why he's doing it now. Does it mean that he wants to start swinging in with his own factory? No, it doesn't. He's just passing turn. There we see a strip mine on the side of Wouter. This could actually be useful for Wouter. I would consider stripping uh, the factory. Because remember, the, the Nether Void works both ways. So you also want to keep Ola low on lands. And if you can keep him low enough, like now, for example, he cannot play out a Surrendip. I think he's using the strip on the factory. In response, Ola is tapping, 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 tapping. What is he going to do? Play an Unsummon. <laughs> oh, I love this. He's unsummoning his own factory to save it from the strip mine. Oh, man. I'm really liking these unsummons. They're so versatile. And Ola, in response, could play a bolt. Oh, playing a red elemental blast. Interesting. I don't know if I would have done that, to be honest. Maybe, maybe I would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we see Ancestral Recall. So probably about just like, oh. Why did I read Elemental Blast that? On the other hand, I mean, it is understandable, Wouter. I mean, you take care of one of his lands. He's obviously low on lands, but this Ancestral Recall kind of changes that probably. He's drawing into a land, playing out another Underground Sea. Wow, what an interesting game number three here. We've seen completely different games. Like game one was pretty one-sided. Game two was a thriller. And here in game three, it's more like kind of a Mexican standoff where, where both players are, are waiting for that right moment to strike.
Maybe that moment is here now for Ola. He's got quite a lot of lands now. Tapping three, that's just another Void Tax. Oh, just the cast. <laughs> the Mock Sapphire. And past turn. He is giving Wouter a lot of time and space. Can Wouter do something with it? Another Mistress Factory. Tapping a lot. There is a Triskelion. First time we see a Triskelion in this match. And I believe Wouter's playing with four, right? I believe we saw four in this picture. Perhaps three? He's playing with a lot of them. And these are quite good because they can kill the, uh, the Llanowar Elves on the side of Ola. And it's, of course, a 4-4 body as well. Do we see an unsummon here in the end step? Yeah, there we see an unsummon. And now, you know, the unsummon now is not bad, but now I don't like the unsummon as much. I mean, it is going to give Ola some time. It's, it's a good tempo play, I guess, but it's just not that valuable as how we've seen the unsummon, um, you know, play its part in, uh, in earlier plays. And there we probably see a surrender up here. Oh, Mind Twist! Mind Twist for three. Wow, and I'm taking, I'm taking back whatever I said about the unsummon. That unsummon was brilliant, you know, unsummon followed up by Mind Twist. I mean, it's yuck, because I'm, I mean, I'm not a fan of Mind Twist, but it's really a good play, Ola. Tip my hat to you, sir. Now let's see what Wouter, uh, Wouter can do here. Finding a vice. Is this... Oh, of course, he's got the two factories. He can swing in for four. I wanted to say, is this the moment where Ola takes over the game? But I forgot about these factories. That changes a lot, because the factories swing in for, for four. That means Ola's going to drop to eight. Ola needs to find an answer to these factories. I mean, a Serenip would do it. Argovian Pixies would do it. He's got, the, he's got the cards in his deck, but can he find the cards right now? That's the big question. Crumble would help. He is on seven. Next turn, he can potentially go to three. He does have enough land, so Nether Void doesn't really matter anymore for him. What can he do? He's in the tank here, trying to find a way out of this. You don't want to drop to three when you're playing against Red, man. He's got chains, he's got bolts. Is Wouter going to win the Raging Bull series? I mean, look at his life total. He's on 19. Ola's on seven. He can swing in for four next turn if Ola cannot do anything. And he's passing turn. Perhaps he's got a crumble. I mean, there are options still or, or another on summon. Although I think he played all, out all his unsum unsummons. Playing two main, I believe. Wouter can swing in here. Just do it. I mean, what's holding you back? Whatever. If, if Ola has something, he has something. Let him respond. Whatever. Go in for the four damage. And is that one card that Wouter just top decked? It could be a chain. could be a bolt. And then it could be over. And Wouter is going to win the tournament, if that's the case. We're not there yet, though. Oh, man, the tension, the tension, the tension. Is Wouter going to win with an underpowered deck here, the Raging Bull Series 2021? He's really in the tank. I wonder what that one card is that he has on hand. I mean, he's got to animate, right? Oh, he's going to play Shatter. Why is he casting the Shatter? So he's casting the Shatter on the Mock Sapphire. I wonder what I'm missing here. So the Sapphire is gone. I mean, I do get that that mana is valuable in this scenario, because now he's got six, so he can play three CMC spells. I do understand that. I wonder, I mean, it's Wouter's turn, right? I'm expecting him to swing in. Or is he doing this at the end step of Ola? Oh, it's Ola's turn still. I'm kind of lost at the moment. Sapphire is gone. Apparently it's a big deal.
What is he going to do here? Tapping four. Casting a crumble on the vice. And then taking on his turn. Okay, so Wouter decided not to swing in with his bow factories. That is so interesting. That is so interesting. And I guess Ola, of course, didn't want to take any damage from the vice. So he played a crumble on the black vice. That makes sense in the end step of Wouter. But I really expected Wouter to swing in for four. This is so interesting. What is he going to do? Still needs to find an answer to those Mishra's factories. Tapping here. Looks like he just wants to play a Mox. There's a Mox Emerald. If you're about to, you're happy with this. You're like, okay, whatever. Finding another card. And playing out another vice. And then, of course, I guess it makes sense that he doesn't want to attack with the factory. Because if he attacks, it's a possibility for Ola to just play out more cards. Going through his library. Probably Wouter asking how many crumbles, how many unsummons do you have in there. Now he's going to attack. Now he's going to make the swing. So he's going to swing in for four. Ola is going to respond here. And play an unsummon. He's got another unsummon. Oh, wow. And then, of course, Wouter can use his factory to make the other one a 3-3. Three, three. Attacking here. Being able to deal three damage. So Ola is going to go to four. Is he going to take damage from the vice? Don't think he is. He's low enough. Next turn... Bouter can win this one. Looks like Ola is going to do something though. Rearranging his lands. Tapping one green. Remember, he's got the Nether Void tax as well. Playing Regrowth. He's got to pay the Nether Void tax, right? I think his own nether void is kind of going to shoot him in the in the foot here. Looking at his hand. Does he have any options still? Yeah, so now he's pay paying the nether void tax. That means he only has three lands left. He can't really play out anything. He can he can play out a mox. Oh man, this Nether Void, it's killing Ola. And of course, the big problem when you're playing Nether Void are those Mishra's factories, because you can, just, you can still play them. You don't have to pay any extra cost. I mean, he's got the answers in his graveyard, but he cannot play them out because of that Nether Void. And it, it, it looks like he's starting to realize that now. Like, this is no good. Gonna go through it again and again and again and again, but it doesn't really matter. He could get the strip mine? Could he get the strip mine? Did he? Oh, he already played out a land, I believe. Or else he could have chosen to strip mine, strip one of the factories. And that's it. I think that's it. Winning the game here. Oh, man. This game three again was a thriller in a whole different way than game number two. This was more of a Mexican standoff. And we see Wouter winning here, also showing that he had a chain in hand as well. And you know that when you're playing against a deck like this. Well, I guess then we have to congratulate Wouter, Wouter Bundemaker for, uh, for winning the Raging Bull Series 2021. Congratulations, Wouter, and what an achievement it has been for you, man. It is an underpowered deck, and it doesn't mean that it has no power because it's got some powerful spells in there. But wow, man, what an accomplishment. And also, Ola, thank you for bringing such a cool deck to the tournament. 
And this was it. This was the final of the Raging Bull Series 2021. And before we go out, I would just like to thank Richard for organizing all of this. Thank you, man. I had great uh, fun coming by your house, doing the live stream together with 11 plus hours and now making these videos after that also. It's great to look back at these matches. And uh, to be honest, I forgot a lot about it. For example, this final. So it was just, it was great to look back at this. Um, and uh, if you want to follow Richard, by the way, he's got a really nice Instagram account. So you can see the address right now so you can follow him on Instagram. And also make sure to check out the RagingBullsSeries.com website because there you can find all the deck photos and Richard's own written tournament report. It's really worth it. And uh, the deck photos alone are worth it, by the way. Some very interesting gems in there. Um, if you want to help the channel out, by the way, you can do that very simply by leaving a like, leaving a comment and becoming a subscriber. All that is free and is really helping the channel move forward. So I would really appreciate it if you would do that or consider doing that. Another thing that you can do is you can become a Patreon or I should say a patron of the show via Patreon. And uh, there's a link popping up right now. Click on that link and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And you can already support Timmy Talks with $1 a month. And there are some nice perks if you do. For example, you can join our Discord server and you can join the Timmy Talks tournaments. And um, from $2 and up, I will also send you a nice Timmy Talks pin, which is really cool with the logo and everything. And last but not least, your name will be in the end scroll of each video. Yes, yes, you heard it correct, of each video. At the end of my videos, including this one, you see an end scroll with all the names of the people that support Timmy Talks. So your name could be on that end scroll. So click on there, click on the info card, and have a look at the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Now all that is said and done, let's go to that wonderful, magnificent end scroll and look at the fantastic patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.